Hello and welcome back. This time we want to talk about analog inputs. Okay, we've talked about analog outputs. We said, okay, it's not really analog because we ca just can turn it on and off very fast that it looks a little bit like analog. So we do pulse width modulation. On our Arduino, we have also analog inputs. However, these analog inputs are not for pulse width modulation. They are real analog things. This is why they are also separate inputs. Okay, they are located down here. They are labeled with A0 to A5. So we have six analog inputs. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each input can handle usually between 0 and 5 volt. If you want to use another voltage level, please refer to the specs. There is also an, a reference voltage input here. You could connect it. However, f out of the box, we are using 0 to 5 volt here. Okay. But in difference to the digital inputs, we are not using exactly 0 and exactly 5 volt. We are using something in between. Okay. So we can use whatever between. The question now is, how do we make, produce a voltage between 0 and 5 volt? I mean, our Arduino has an, has an output of 5 volt, okay, 5 volt, no issue. Has an out, output of 3.3 volt, also 3.3 volt, no issue. But, I mean, these are discrete voltages. How do I divide this voltage somehow? produce from a bigger voltage a smaller voltage. I will now uh, I will now show you I will now show you how this might happen. Yeah. I take a two kilo ohm resistor place it between plus and some input. Okay. I, will, ah, I have not... Okay, now it felt different. Between plus and an input. And I will take a 1 kilo ohm resistor. Okay. Place it also. This one I will place between this point and minus. So, from plus to minus, I do have, in total, 3 kilo ohm. It's not too easy to plug it in. Ah, uh, you will get used to this. Okay. So, these are, my, these are my two resistors. From plus, 2 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm. To minus. I will again make the connections on this side. I do not have to care about plus and minus. What does it mean? Yeah. Let's see. I have here a measurement, a measurement device. measurement device, uh, turn it on, I will measure the ohm now. Okay. Right now it's on, on overload, so I measure between here and here, and of course I measure this 2 kilo ohm here, around 2 kilo ohm. I measure between here and here, and I measure, I should measure this 1 kilo ohm. Yes, uh, 0 0.9 kilo ohm. And from here to here, we do have our 3 kilo ohm. Yeah? So in total we have 3 kilo ohm, 2 and 1. Yeah? From here to here 2, from here to here 1. Now let's see what does this mean, what does it mean for, for uh, the voltage levels. I will simply connect 
plus and minus, so plus 5 volt. I'll connect to plus, ground I will connect to, to the minus power. And I power it up. The good thing is, it's still, the LEDs are still on. In this case, if your LEDs are turning off, yeah, then you have somewhere a short circuit here. If you directly, shortly show you, please don't do this with your Arduino. If you connect plus and minus, yeah, you will see how this, this uh, LED go dark. Ooh, you have seen? Ooh. This is because we take too much current from here and this Arduino dies then. Yeah. If you don't stop it or they don't disconnect it, these chips here will get very hot yeah, and then it, they will start to burn and then it will... then this was everything you will ever again have from your Arduino. So I said voltage level. Let's take the voltage level. Of course, we should be able to measure here our 5 volts. I'll try this now. From here to here, 4.8 volts. Okay. Working. Yeah. How much do we have from here to here? 3.2. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. 3.2. And from here to here, I have 1.6. Okay. Why is this? Because this resistor is double the size than this resistor. So here we need double the voltage to here because the flow of, of uh, the current flow, yeah, the, the flow of charges is constant. From here to here, here the same amount of, of charges flow like here. Yeah. And to overcome the big, the big trans, uh, resistor, we need more voltage drop then to overcome with the same amount of of charges running through to overcome the small resistor okay. depending on the resistor voltages on the resistor values this voltage level do differ yeah. like i said here we have 3.2 yeah. Here we have 1.6, yeah, and in total we have this 4.8. Yeah. If I now simply take this out, this 1K resistor, yeah, and use another 2K resistor to connect, would you still expect that uh, we do have? We do have again the the three point two volts here. Let's have a look. Now we only have two point four, yeah. and here we have also two point four, and in total we have again our four point eight. Okay. So this time I changed the resistor values. Both resistors are now the same size. So we need the same amount of, of voltage drop to drive the charges through the resistors. So I can select how much voltage I have at this point. If I measure here. Yeah. First I had 1.6 and now I have... 2.4. Depending on the on the value of the resistors, I can select the amount of voltage I measure at this point. Okay. And this exactly this type of, 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 of network, let's call it network, I can use to select 
to select a certain a certain value. Okay, to select a certain value. Uh, however, if you if you really have to or all the time have to unplug and replug a resistor, it is not very practical. Yeah. So you do have in your starter kit, you do have a thing like this. This little fella here. This is a so-called uh, potentiometer. It has. Will it get sharp? No, autofocus is not really working. However, it has three legs. Yeah, it has three legs, and you can select uh, the resistance value. How is it working? I'll plug it in here at this point in my breadboard. It fits in quite nice. Also, use here gentle force. There is also a nice handle. There is also a nice handle. You can use it. Simply push it in, and then you have a small stick, and you can turn. You can turn the knob. Oh. Yeah. You can turn the knob, and it should work. How does it work? Of on at one side. I will connect minus. At the other side, at the other side, I will connect uh, plus. Yeah. Please always, like I said, always, always watch if the lights are going out. Huh? If they are going out, you have done something wrong. You have a short circuit. Yeah. And now I want to know, again, here is my, my measurement device. Okay. Let's see between here... <laughs> cables, huh? Always doing like they are live. Like they are live. Measure between here and here. I measure minus four point. I measure minus four point three. Why four point three? Before I measured four point four point eight. I will now unplug those two because now I start to overload the, the, the output. Let's see how much how much do we have now? To reach them somewhere. No, nothing. I do not reach them, all right. Why is that? Why is that? Plus. Hmm. Let's see. Measure between here and here. Oh, so zero. What's going on here? Hmm. Maybe it's a teachable moment. Four dot four dot eight volts, like before. Okay, finally. So I plug this in here now. Hmm. 
I should also be able to measure 4.8 here. Yeah, now it's working. 4.8. Plug this in again here. Back. Okay, and now I want to measure the voltage level between this point, the third connector, and this point. Currently, I have 4.6. 4.5, 4.6, around this. Yeah. Now I make a slight turn, measure again, 3.9. Yeah. I can adjust the voltage level by simply turning the knob. Okay. If I turn the knob down on one direction, 2.5 and so on. And the further I turn the knob, the further I turn the knob, the, the, the less the less voltage I will measure. Okay? This thing here is called a potentiometer. Potentiometer. Uh, this one we will use. This one we will use to measure, to measure, to test our analog input. Okay? So one end plus, second end minus. In between, we do not have, like before, 3 kilo ohms, we do have 10 kilo ohms, that is why it's written on the 10k. Yeah. And here, this is the so-called uh, sliding contact, we can select where we want to have the sliding contact, here, on this side, yeah. or we can turn it over to this side. Yeah. One time the contact is directly connected to ground, so between here and here is zero volt. Yeah? And one time the sliding contact is connected directly to plus five volt. So we have plus five volt from here to here. And we can position the sliding contact everywhere between, and so the voltage will be divided in a big part and a small part. In two parts, let's call it, depending on the, on how much I turn the knob. So I will now connect the output of the, of the potentiometer to an, to the input. Okay. I will now connect this to the input and now we have on the input here voltage levels between 0 and 5 volt. That's exactly that's exactly what we wanted to have. Okay. How do we how do we proceed? Or how do we do we address those this 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 input this input? Yeah. I will make a new program. I will call it, I will save it, I will save it uh, under the name uh -huh. 3 uh, uh, 10 analog input analog input save we can have a new thing here I will immediately define uh, ana in ana in zero zero uh, cobalt time constant yeah. this time I do not have to select if this is an in and output, since those pins down there, they are for sure an input. Yeah. However, we do have, I will, I will start the serial, serial.begin, yeah. 9600. I will also make a print dot serial dot 
print line. In it done. Okay. And here I will make an integer variable. Yeah. I call I will call it value. Val. Well, yeah. And this time I don't make a digital read. I make an analog read. Okay. That's the corresponding command to read from the analog input. Analog read input. From where? Ana in zero. And that's it. That's about it. And I want to know what is what's the value? What do we get here? Yeah. So I'll simply since I don't know or I don't like to read, yeah, since I simply make a printout serial dot print, yeah read zero dot print line value and that's it so i simply read from the analog input and write it to the serial output huh? download it's compiling looks good i'll open the serial monitor Okay, we have some value here. Yeah, it's going up and down. If I grab it, it's a little bit more firm. This is simply because I have here some sometimes with the big foots, with the big, big things yeah, of this potentiometer, I sometimes have troubles. Okay, so let's see. I turn it to the one side. I reach zero. Yeah? So one end seems to be zero. Yeah? Then I turn it to the other side and I reach 1023. Yeah? So the other side is 1023. That's five volts. Yeah? I now send five volts to the input. I get a value of 1023. I now send zero volt to the input. Yeah. Zero volt to the input. <laughs> yeah, here, zero volt to the input. Uh, a value of zero. So, and if I get a value in between, yeah, I have something in between. Yeah. And if I turn it in the middle, I should have around 512 or something like this. Yeah. Okay. So, what does this mean? This means I'm getting a number based on how much voltage is there. Yeah? Zero voltage means zero, five volts means 1023. Why is this? I do have uh, a 10-bit uh, analog digital converter on there. So, zero volts is transferred into 10 zeros binary and 5 volts is transferred into 10 binary ones. So, this is zero and this is 1023. In total, we divide the range from 0 to 5 into 1024, 0, up to 1023, don't forget to count 0, into 1024 parts. Yeah? And we get the information in which part we be. Okay? This is a little bit this is a little bit tricky now to understand. There's a separate video which ex explains this dividing into ranges and so on. You can watch this if you're interested. Or you can simply say, okay, zero is zero and five volt is 1023 and it's something in between. Yeah. Then it's in between. Good. Uh, This means I could measure now. Yeah? 
because if I now ca calculate, so this is this is raw, this is the raw value, then I could calculate in percent, yeah. So this is serial dot dot print. Yeah. This is the value divided by uh, one thousand twenty three multiplied by hundred. Mm -hmm. This you should not do. Yeah. Why is this? Yeah. Little side information, this is an integer value. Yeah? So if the integer value is between 0 and 1023, if it's it's just an integer value, yeah? so this calculation will be integer calculation. So here you either get 0 or 1. There is no dot in integer. Yeah? It's not 0.7. It's not coming out of this. Yeah. So how to do this? You could first multiply and then divide. It's better yeah, in this case. Later, if we are learning about float values, I will show you something else. Yeah. Right now, please remember this. So it's better like this. Yeah. Okay. A download. Let's watch. Minus eleven percent. Really. That's interesting, let's say. That's at least interesting. 1023. Mm -hmm. What is happening there? Hmm? Somebody an idea? The thing is that an integer value is only going up to 32,000. Yeah. So if we have uh, if we have 1,000 multiplied by 100, we have 100,000. So we are above a certain value. This is not working with integer value. So I could use here long yeah. and then suddenly I will not touch it. Yeah. Here we see 300 and suddenly you have 37%. Suddenly it's working. Yeah. If I turn it on, it's running up to 100%, going down to 0%. Yeah. Or something in between. What happens here is that we are above the maximum value. Yeah. If we are above the maximum value, we will have an overflow. Yeah. And this then something something really strange coming out of this calculation. Okay. I now also can show you how it looks like if I would exchange those two, like I said before, don't do this. Yeah. Download. Now we divide it first, and here you see now we have zero percent. Zero zero zero. Always zero. And only here suddenly we have a 100. Zero, zero and 100. Why is this? Yeah. Because here we always get zero. Only if this is 100, uh, 1023, then we get 1. And 1 multiplied by 100 is 100. And if it's this 1022, then it's zero dot whatever, and the integer is only the number before the dot, so it's zero. Zero multiplied by 100. 
this is exactly the behavior I told you first this does not look good yeah? if you multiply first with 100 and then divide it by 1023 it works much much better however you might get into trouble with the size of the integer okay now you see it's 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 jumping between 99 and 100 percent and not between 0 and 100 percent how to overcome this yeah there is also a data type called float and this float can hold comma values okay floating point values and this time i can make the same calculation here like like here yeah. and this time i make a type cast okay i say okay take whatever is in in here and make a float out of it and then do a multiplication and dividing yeah. then it's a floating point operation and here then it's a floating point operation and i can print out here percent download and we suddenly see there are comma values yeah there are comma values 100 99.6 or whatever yeah suddenly there are comma values that's simply because it's a floating point variable and i did this typecast here yeah so whatever is inside here make it a floating point and then do this calculation okay and now i could even i could even uh, make another percent multiplied by 5 divided by 100 yeah? and that's of course the volts okay. now we only also get a printout in volts and here uh, and here um, integer values would not have sense because really if I only distinguish between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 volts it doesn't really help but here I get a very smooth oh a very smooth values yeah, with this floating point so this is how an analog input works and side information how a floating point works side information how an integer calculation is done and so on yeah. so this is also everything you have also written in your script yeah there is also described this dividing of the of the voltage between two resistors or with a sliding contact that you can divide one big resistor into small smaller parts and then select if you grab 5 volts here or 0 volts here or slide it up and down and grab something in between yeah of course there is the the scheme yeah? there's also the description of the the value and then there is the the program it looks a little bit different than what we just programmed and that's it yeah your task here yeah your task here is that you should make an analog input and you can adjust the brightness of LED. Yeah. If you turn it down, the LED should be dimmed. If you turn it up, the LED should be maxed. So this is how it should look like. Currently it's it's off. And if I turn, ooh, if I turn. It should come on slowly and the brightness should be able you should be able to adjust the brightness how 
how you like. Okay. Maybe if I turn off here the lightning, maybe we see it better then. Turns on slowly. And then we can turn it on. And on the screen it even looks like a bright star. Whoa! In reality it's not that impressive. But you see how it should work. Okay. So good luck with this. And thank you for listening so far. Okay. Goodbye.